It's me. I'll take him. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. It is wonderful to be with you here today. And uh, Vilma and I had a great trip. Uh, Black Hills of South Dakota are beautiful. So if you've never been there, I would recommend you go. But I'll give you some heads up. The drive from here to there is pretty boring. It's nothing but flat. Well, once you get out of the hill current, it's nothing but flat as far as you can see. And the roads are straight. Plus, when you get out of Texas, the speed limits go. <laughs> so you can't get out of those other states in a hurry. So, uh, but it was great trip. We enjoyed it. And we're glad to, glad to be back. Glad to be back. Uh, to start out this morning, uh, I'd like to talk about Wally B a little bit. So you go to the first line. Uh, he lived a long time, from 29 to 2023. And there's a good shot of him, just like I remember him uh, way back when. I was much younger then. But yeah, still remembering from way back when. Next slide. Uh, in case you haven't seen this, but uh, got this information, you can make note of it, though, that on 8 October at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is us, it will be streamed live on YouTube. And the service will be in the Community of Christ Temple. So if you want to tune in, please do. It's... Uh, I, I uh, dismiss, I really like this man. Go ahead. Uh, he was involved in a lot of things. Um, he was our uh, prophet president from 78 to 98. I remember this date when this happened and the turmoil it caused in the congregation. I was in Fort Worth at the time and the church is split. And and uh, I mean, I remember this, but you know, in my mind, I, my personal mind, I looked up and said, you know, all my life growing up, everybody that was doing everything was primarily the women. The only time I ever saw males was up here. Uh, maybe y'all had different experiences, but I said, well, I can't argue this point and I'm glad it happened. So, um, I do remember this event. Next slide, slide please. Um, the construction of the temple. I think we probably all can remember when that decision was made and while it was being constructed. And if you've never been to the temple and you're ever up that way, I would highly recommend you go and visit this building. When you walk in, you can feel it. And the building structure is phenomenal. Uh, but he was instrumental uh, in this. Next slide. Uh, open communions. Boy, that changed things. And again, uh, he, he, had a, he was a driving force behind that and how we do communion today. Next slide. And I can remember reading about all the travels that he's been on and so on. And um, he definitely got around. Next. You can see all the things that he was actively involved in. And not only while he was our prophet president, but even after he retired, he was extensively involved uh, in these types of organizations. So, uh, Wally B, I thought was a phenomenal man and he did great things. And, uh, uh, but I would recommend that uh, if you're available to tune in on YouTube, please do. I got this from Carol. And, you know, Carol's, if I ever want to know about anything, ask Carol and she knows just about whatever I asked, and, you know, about the people and the past and, and so on. And uh, she sent me, she she sent me this, and this is Carol. Said I remember when in the nineties he and his wife came to Shenandoah. 
for his granddaughter's baptism. Uh, if you all remember Marilyn, she was pastor at the time. And that Sunday morning, when she and Dick came early, they realized the font water, the font water was very cold. Now, we didn't have that problem this summer. The water was pretty nice, but very cold, and the heater wasn't working. As I recall, they got hot water and carried it from the kitchen to add it to the font. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, now, this is the way I remember Wally B, as you described him here. It said, Wally B and his wife came in, sat with their family, and left. No fanfare. And the times that I had ever uh, seen him or whatever, he wasn't big on fanfare. He wasn't big on, look at me, I am. And I, that's one of the things that uh, always impressed me, and obviously... He was the same. So uh, just thought, uh, and Patty put these slides together and Jim recommended it. So, uh, but Wally B, he, he deserves this and, and uh, keep his family in your prayers. Okay, now I'm gonna go through the announcements. Once I can find my paper, oh, here it is, right here in front of me. Okay, we are here to celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to fellowship with one another. And the scriptures tell us that we gain strength when we get together in numbers and share with others with our common beliefs. Uh, enduring principles, did anybody get a bingo? Any Anybody get a bingo? Oh, look at that. She got a bingo. Yeah. Good. Our streak is still going. Our strength is still going. Uh, just remember that they're out there on the table. Please take one. Or you can go on our website for those who are business, visiting us. Again, and every bingo card, based upon the entire uh, Enduring Principles, are located on our website. And you can just print them out. And if y'all want to use them in your home congregation, please do. Word is getting out, but that they are available to everyone. Um, this last Thursday, we had a funeral here in the church and it was the brother-in-law of Pat. And is that correct, Ken? Oh, your brother-in-law, the brother-in-law of Ken and they came down and asked if they could use our facility. And, and uh, so they held the service here uh, on Thursday. And uh, from what I hear, the service went, went well. So glad we could help you as a congregation, help you. Oh, by the way, they're from Ohio. Ah, Ohio, so they're a long way. Did you drive or fly? Oh, okay. All right, cool. Um, beginning the 1st of October, which is today, is the food drive. Is the food drive, and Misty's heading this up. So if you've got anything, uh, non-perishable foods that you want to come in and drop off, please do. And, and if you got any questions, ask Misty. Uh, potluck is next Sunday next Sunday, and I do know that we have plenty of lemonade because Ken, they left many bottles in the fridge. So, and there's some chips and so on and so forth back there that we can use either there or at game day that we will have. Um, Crafty Ladies will be October 10th, 10 o'clock here in the church. So if you can attend ladies, please do. They do definitely worthy things. Uh, game day is October 21st, 2 p.m. here at the church. So if you can come, bring your games, bring some snacks, and we'll have a good time. We'll have a good time. Uh, men's retreat coming up. I personally plan on going. Um, 
and it is December one through three of of this year. So if you could, if you want to go, please uh, register and attend the men's retreat. Don't forget Bible class is Mondays at seven on Zoom, and so it's theology on Zoom on Tuesdays at six thirty, and junior high, senior high class um, is on Wednesdays at seven p.m all on the Zoom link that's on our website. So with that, oh, we have lots of prayer requests today and Jim's gonna go through those. Uh, but good news, Scott sent me a letter or an email and <coughs> I agree with him. I know that there people in our congregation have good news. And we would like to share that good news, but we can only share it if you provide it to Scott and so that he's in the know and we can and we can announce. It doesn't have to necessarily be winning a championship or you know, so on and so forth. We have a lot of things that happen in our lives that are good news. And if we would like you to share that. So if you can, those out on Zoom. And here in the congregation, uh, please share those with Scott, because uh, I know we have no problems getting prayer requests. But at the same time, the good news we ought to raise up as well to the Lord. So please, please consider that. And uh, I will leave it to Carol. Oh, no, I'm going to leave it to Jim. All right. Jim. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. I'd invite you to bow with me for a word of prayer. Gracious God of all creation, we gather in your name and with love for our church family and all your creation. Accept our presence in your midst from wherever we are. Creator of everyone, you loved us before we were born and continue to nurture us daily. So with your love in mind, we present concerns that weigh on our hearts and souls, and we share our concerns and ask for your intervention to heal and comfort. Amanda M, Heidi J, and their families are grieving and face sorrow for the death of their mother. Jim W. and family are dealing with continued serious health issues, but we're also grateful for a recent rebound he's had and experienced. Josephine B. is healing from cancer. Be with her and comfort her and her support people. The family and friends of Louis L. who recently passed away and please be with the family uh, that is going through uh, personal issues that they're holding um, personal. Be with Steve V and his family, his friends, and uh, those who are concerned for him and uh, continue in his health recovery. Edna W and family need comfort and support as Johnny has gone missing. Dor Doris W. is grieving the passing of her good friend. Michael D. and family are grieving the loss of their grandson and comfort the family and friends at the passing of Wallace S. Gentle God, we also know that you are fully aware of concerns in people's hearts which are not voiced and go unknown, and we ask for your intervention to ease these concerns and heal. God, as we feel relief to know that you attend our needs, we also are joined in this moment to worship, and we recognize that you are constantly at work in our world and in our lives. 
and give us wisdom to stay pliable and open to your promptings and your shaping and your directions. Bless this day and its worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Well... Welcome to all of you. We are uh, in San Antonio, Texas, and we are the Community of Christ, Shenandoah Congregation. We're so glad to have all of you here today with us to worship. Today is Communion Sunday, Oblation Sunday, and um, if you've not yet, you Zoomers, if you've not yet uh, gotten your emblems together, you might want to do that now or during our first hymn. We love to hear stories, yes? We're gonna have several today in our service. Um, we're gonna reflect on several faith stories of God at work in the lives of others. Our speaker is Kim Job. Jim Burdick is bringing the invitation to communion. Scott Job will bring us our disciples' generous response. And I'm Carol Burdick, and now I call you to worship with verses 1 through 4 of Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not forget them. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. Please remain seated now as we sing now in this moment, number 96 in your hymnal, followed by the invocation. Jesus. 
bow with me for our prayer. Creator of us all, we come today for reflection, repentance, and renewal. As we hear parables this hour of how you are at work in people's lives, may we reflect on our own experiences when we felt your presence, your gentle nudge. This hour is for reflection, repentance, renewal at the communion table of our Lord so that we might go from here as your disciples, as followers of your way and as grateful people because of the abundance of love and recognized grace in our lives. Bless us, renew us this day, this hour we pray. Amen. We'll now have a moment of story written by Kathy Kapler Vesey and read by Misty Coger. The youth gathering known as Spectacular many times has offered ceramics as a class. It has been my privilege to be friends with the teacher, Jim Olson, who has taught me to work with clay creatively. It has been enticing to watch Jim's skilled hands create beautiful bowls, mugs, and other useful items. Each creation is a work of art and more. They can hold vegetables, fruits, drinks, and other life-sustaining items. The practical value of Jim's creation forms an image in my mind of the potter's hands helping feed the hungry. We are much like that clay, formed by the potter's hands to be beautiful and useful. We are formed to help others, to feed the hungry physically and spiritually. We are formed by God to be vessels. Jeremiah learned that lesson when he went to the potter's house and watched him take a lump of clay and form a useful pot. But the lesson also relayed that if the pot weren't formed properly, the potter would destroy it and do it again with additional clay. Many times I've watched Jim discard what to me looked like a well-formed pot but it wasn't in Jim's eyes. He would take the wet clay and fold it into a ball to be formed again into a useful pot. Such imagery caused Jeremiah to understand what God was saying. God formed Jeremiah to be the messenger to tell the people of Israel so they also could be formed. They could be useful and serve God, but if they did not, they would need to be reformed. I invite you to consider how God's potter hand has formed us into clay vessels of spirit and service. Will you be a beautiful and useful vessel? The youth gathering. Our prayer for peace starts with a story of God at work in the life of one young man. In fact, if he'd had a Richard Cole bingo card, he could check off several of our enduring principles such as pursuit of peace, responsible choices, unity and diversity, and worth of all persons by the way he responded to a classmate. Cheryl and Ron Sauer, moved from Round Rock to Missouri a couple of years back. And they did this so that they could live close to their grandchildren and help the family. Many of you know the Sowers, especially from our Coastal Bend Mission Center work that they did. So let's listen to Cheryl's story that was published in the Daily Bread. My grandson, Stephen, is on the high functioning end of the autism spectrum. He is mildly challenged socially. He spent his elementary school years in the same classrooms as other children with special needs. Some were deaf and many needed constant care. 
Stephen found his niche in learning a little sign language so he could feel more a part of the main group and fit in by helping care for the other students in his classroom. As his third year progressed, the dedicated teachers and support staff for the special needs group found it increasingly difficult to challenge Stephen intellectually. So they decided to steer him toward one or two mainstream classes, which would give him the opportunity to listen and take part without pressure. Changing classrooms meant walking the halls with the rest of the students in the school. During one of these trips, a sixth grade boy walked up to Stephen and pointed at him and said, hey, aren't you one of those kids that belongs in the retard room? Stephen stopped and tilted his head to better see this tall boy standing in front of him. He then threw his arms around him and he hugged him and he said, yes, and now we can be retards together. This reaction stunned the sixth grader. Within a few seconds, however, he burst out laughing. He gave Stephen a high five and he walked away smiling. This was a sign language they both could understand. Diversity comes in all shapes, sizes, nationalities, physical and mental circumstances. We continue to break down the walls of separation and hostility built of fear and ignorance about mental and social disorders. God continually calls us to widen our circle as we embrace our diversity because no one should stand alone. Would you please pray our prayer for peace with me? Oh God, who is continuously at work in creation. We unite our hearts in prayer as we pause and focus on the need for justice and peace in our lives and the world. The news is filled with stories that do not reflect your vision of shalom, and we confess that we sometimes become overwhelmed by those stories. We're also, we also confess that we sometimes get in the way of your work in the world, both directly and indirectly. We call upon your grace and forgiveness as we prepare to participate in the sacrament of communion. God of all generations, give us courage to be your ambassadors of peace, doing your work in our families, neighborhoods, cities, and the world. Guide us with divine wisdom in determining where and how we can make a positive difference in the places where we live and serve. Let our words proclaim your son and promote communities of joy, hope, love, and peace. Let our actions reflect our best understanding of who you are as we work for justice and share Christ's peace. Grant us courage and hope when we are fearful or discouraged. In the name of Jesus, the peaceful one, we pray. Amen. And now, if you will turn in your hymnal to number 533, I come in joy. I come with joy, a child of God. And then we will receive the invitation to communion by evangelist Jim Burdick.
Good morning. It is Communion Sunday. And our theme is God is at work. There are different ways to look at this moment. In one sense, we could say it's uh, 11.25 a.m. on Sunday, October the 1st, 2023. And here at 11.910 Vance Jackson Road in San Antonio, Texas, or whatever IP address your Zoom connection is coming from, we could look at those specific uh, ways of considering this moment. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. But there is a different, and I would say very significant way to look at this moment. 2,000 years ago, in an upper room with only candles for light, or perhaps a small fire, with locked doors in hiding, in fear, threatened by both Roman and Jewish authorities, a couple of dozen believers sat on a floor. They didn't have tables in those days. Around a bleak, shared meal, and perhaps two dozen people shared a meal, and at the end, Jesus took bread and blessed it and shared it with his followers. And then he took wine and blessed it and shared it with his followers. Jesus told them that this was sacred and that we should do this in remembrance of him. That's where we get the word sacrament, to make things sacred and do them with sacred meaning. Here is yet another way to look at this moment. We could say that this is how we could view the moment. Around the world, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, any day, in any language, any age, any gender, worshipers gather, and believers in Christ accept blessed bread and blessed wine in the name of Jesus for the very purpose, the very sacred purpose of renewing their love for Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Almighty, Wonderful, Counselor. Take this bread and take this wine. Renew and be renewed and refreshed. Amen. As we prepare to receive communion, please know that all are welcome at Christ's table. The Lord's Supper or communion is a sacrament in which we remember the life, the death, the resurrection, and continuing presence of Jesus Christ. In Community of Christ, we also experience community com communion as an opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant and to be formed as disciples who live Christ's mission. Others may have different or added understandings within their faith traditions, but we invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do it in the love and peace of Jesus Christ. Priest Kelly Patton and Elder Earl Anderson will serve you this morning, and Kelly will offer the blessing over the bread and wine. We will all come forward to partake of the uh, emblems 
starting with the last row as we always do that. And then please dispose of your cup in the tray over here by the window. If you are unable to come forward, please remain seated and I will be happy to serve you. So please kneel now as priest Kelly Patton blesses the bread and wine. O oh God, the eternal father, we ask thee in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who partake of them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of thy son and witness unto thee, O God, the eternal father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy son and always remember him and keep his commandments, which he has given them that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen.
Good morning. Our scripture reading for today comes from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 13. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that all the names given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work on your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the only letter of Paul to the Philippians that we have. Though scholars debate whether we have all of Paul's letters, as this meme shared by a Canadian church member indicates. Apparently, they were having trouble with their mail up in Canada that we didn't find out about, except through church members on Facebook. Like in last week's scripture reading, Paul's letter to the Philippians was also written from prison. Philippians refers to the people of Philippi. Philippi was in Macedonia, now a part of Greece. And you may remember from the book of Acts that Paul was prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching in Asia or Bithynia. So he made his way to Troas, where he received a summons and a dream to go to Macedonia. Although it was a Greek city, it had been under Roman rule for almost a century before Paul's visit. Most of the people were Greeks and Gentiles. The city did not seem to have a Jewish presence, according to my commentator. So Paul's converts would likely have been Gentiles and would have been most familiar with the various religious cults practiced in the city alongside the official cult of the emperor. Our scripture passage comes from the part of the letter containing pastoral advice offered to a community facing opposition and persecution. This section gives advice on how the Philippians should behave. Apart from the emphasis on unity, the instructions are general rather than particular. What Paul is anxious to do is to instill an attitude, the attitude of Christ himself. The first part of our scripture reading focuses on Jesus. Union with Christ forms the basis of the appeal to an appropriate way of life. It is because they are in Christ that they are united to him and to one another and are able to share his mind and strength. Our theme this week comes from the last verse in our scripture reading, and it tells us that it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And here lies the problem for us today, and possibly for the letter's first readers as well. We sometimes focus on will to the exclusion of work or work to the exclusion of will. 
Will without work doesn't do what Jesus did or what Jesus told us to do, and it doesn't help anyone. Verse 2 tells us we need to be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind as Christ Jesus. One of the overworked phrases in Christian culture today is thoughts and prayers. While I thoroughly agree that we need to pray for one another, for our communities and for our world, we shouldn't feel that we're off the hook for having done that. It may make us feel better, but it doesn't always meet the needs of the people around us. In a familiar story, a little boy was being tucked into bed during a big storm. He was reluctant to let his mother go, but she assured him that Jesus loved him and would be with him and look out after him. And the little boy replied with a wail, but I want somebody with skin on. If thoughts and prayers were enough, I don't think we'd have all the problems we have now. This meme shows the priest has already ridden past the in injured man, while the Levite glances over and says, thoughts and prayers. It certainly wouldn't have been enough if the priest and Levite had just prayed for the man who fell into the hands of the robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead, as we read in the Gospel of Luke. At least, that's not how the parable Jesus told went. It was the Samaritan, the, whom nobody liked in the Jewish lands, who was moved with compassion and went to him and bandaged his wounds and brought him to an inn and took care of him. He was the one who showed him mercy, according to Jesus, who ended the parable by saying, go and do likewise. The book of James reminds us if a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what good of it is that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. That's easy to say, but it's hard to do. We need to be God's hands and feet in the world. We need to imitate Jesus. The meme now showing says, whenever someone tells me they've prayed, and so it's in God's hands now, I remind them that they are the hands and to get to work. The author of this quotation, Nathan Monk, is an activist, author, and former Orthodox priest writing on issues of social justice, religion, and philosophy. He's dedicated over 10 years of his life to advocating for social justice, particularly for homeless people. He has good reason to know and care about homeless people. According to the blurb on one of his books, his is a remarkable tale of a child who rose from living in parking lots to becoming a widely recognized advocate for the homeless. However, work without will doesn't reflect Jesus either, especially if it only grudgingly helps or helps more for what the giver gets out of it than for the sake of the receiver. Verses three and four tell us, do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Humility is one of the things in the first part of this scripture that Jesus was praised for. It's not something that people are always good at. I can remember a devotion I did a number of years ago to, that said to pray for others. I know, shocking, right? After a while of doing this, I realized what I was doing was telling God how to fix them. Instead of going to any mental or physical effort myself to find out what their real needs were. The joke is that our church discovered grace at the end of the 20th century. Before that, we seemed to have been more interested in works. You know, we were going to build Zion all by ourselves, apparently. 
One of our songs, I have found the glorious gospel, proclaimed that for celestial glory in the presence of the Lord, I will work and watch and humbly bow the knee. But what can we do? The gospel of John tells us that Jesus said, Verily, truly, very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. That sounds scary. Is God going to ask me to move a literal mountain somewhere? Probably not. But you never know. Once again, I'd like to remind us of our mission prayer. God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me the courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen. Could it really be that easy? Could we develop the will to be more like Jesus and be open to the work that he did in the world? I think we can. If Nathan Monk has a heart for the homeless because he once was one of them, what experiences have we had to give us a heart for the abused and downtrodden? Were you bullied as a child? Did you feel unloved? Did you lack opportunities to get education or a job? What kind of help or even positive attention and love would you have loved to have had? As the mission prayer says, we need to keep our eyes open to opportunities and be ready to respond. May we do so. Scott, Scott will now bring us our disciples' generous response. You know, I was just thinking about how we used to have the tithing statements. Uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. We used to have where, you know, you take, take your earnings and subtract 10% of your earnings as first fruits to God. Well, the good news is that we're not limited to 10% anymore. Uh, the disciples' generous response says we can give and and not just money. So today we uh, all came together and we shared in the abundance available at the table of communion. Now let us turn our hearts and minds to reflect on our mission initiatives to one specifically to abolish poverty and end suffering. We remember that there are others in the world who have needs that we have the capability to meet. We recommit ourselves anew to being Jesus' hands and feet and voice and advocacy in the world. May we all come together as we come together to tie the of our time and our talents and our treasures and our testimonies. And may that be consecrated for doing God's work in the world. As is the community of Christ practice, when we share in communion, any undesignated um, contributions in the offering plate, they're designated to the worldwide mission ties to uh, abolish poverty and suffering, which includes the oblation ministry. As you make your offering, please rejoice in the gifts you have received and re recommit yourself as a whole life steward, responding to support God's work, both locally and around the world. And those of you on Zoom, you can find out how to contribute by going to the seaofchristsa.org uh, website that you've, and is following the directions there. And so I would uh, ask that our uh, ushers come forward.
and we'll go ahead and take the offering. Or the tithe. Or... Let us pray. Lord God, I rejoice in the fact that we have these gifts that we can give to the work of Jesus Christ in this world. We thank you, Lord, for all gifts that you give us. And we, we want to respond as your disciples. We want to give back. We want to do Jesus' work in the world and contribute to that if we can't. And so we just thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And uh, we continue to worship you, Lord, as we respond, giving back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to ask you now to stand for our closing hymn in these moments we remember number 515 and afterward we'll close our service with a benediction of blessing please stand now source of peace give you peace at all times and in every way the lord be with you all amen and remember it is god who is at work in you so go and join in wherever you find god at work <laughs> zoomers can unmute now if you'd like to
share comments. Visit paper. Good morning, everybody. Oh, Miranda's on. Did you want your first, Carol? Yeah, probably. Good morning. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? Good, Patty. Good. It's good. What's the, what, what's the weather over there? You're in Pennsylvania, right? Yes, it's sunny and in the 70s today. Oh, nice. Yeah, getting and close the, to 80. The leaves are changing? <laughs> the leaves are changing. Yes, ma'am, they oh. are. Yeah, it's, yeah. I don't think they're quite at their peak yet here, but, but they are changing. Yeah. And they're real pretty. I miss that so much. Thanks, ma'am. Hey. <laughs> Nice sermon. Very nice. Hi, Kim. It's hard. So good to see you all. Good to see you too. Not too many of us online today. I guess, yeah, it's always but better. Communion's better in the house, right? In, in person, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. Well, I think I'm going to sign off, so you all take care. You too. All right. Bye-bye.